Alrighty, hosses. So in the last video, we learned all about action creators and actions. So now let's go back to our trusty diagram and figure out what we have to do next. Actions, and then we need to figure out reducers. Wait a minute, mate. I thought we already learned about reducers. In like the first tutorial, we already took care of that. And all reducers are, are pretty much just part of your application, just anything that you have to contain in memory. So how the heck did we get back to this? Oh, wait a minute. I guess there's a little more to it than just a piece of memory that your application has to hold on to. It also says it takes in actions and updates part of application state. Huh, that's interesting. And that brings me to the last point that I want to make. You see these actions right here? These actions, they don't really do anything or manipulate anything in a smart kind of way. All they are is just telling your application, hey, something happened, some user event, some action, it occurred. That's all. They just make an announcement to the world and then they're like, all right, I did my thing. Now, it's actually up to the reducer to determine how that action is going to change your application. So this reducer is actually the smart part that says, okay, whenever I hear this announcement, how is that going to change my data? So in this case, we have one action. Whenever the user clicks one of these names, that's the announcement that gets made. So then what we need to do is we need to say, okay, whenever that happens, display their info under here. Now, for this application, I'm just gonna say that the user that's currently selected, we'll just call that the active user. All right, so last piece of the puzzle, let's go to our reducers and check this out. So this is the data that we have so far. We have three users stored in here. Now, of course, eventually we're gonna need to make one of these the active user, and that user gets displayed on the bottom right here. So let me start thinking about this. I mean, we can have another one another field called active and we can set it equal to true and false but we really don't want to do this because we really don't want to change this piece of data because right now i mean later on we may add a functionality to kind of add new users and delete users but hey we're just starting to learn react so we really never want this user list to change we're always going to have three users no matter what one is the active one so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this reducer, this piece of memory, and I'm gonna leave it alone. However, we still need to decide who the active user is, so how do we do that? Well, I'm actually gonna make a brand new reducer, and I'm just gonna name this reducer active user. So again, all this piece of data is gonna be equal to is essentially whatever user got selected. So again, we have two reducers, two pieces of memory that our application needs to be aware of. The first one is a list of all the users, and the second little piece of memory is what user is currently selected. What one is the active user? And this is going to change, so we're gonna set it up a little bit differently than this right here. It's actually gonna be really cool. So, of course, this is gonna be a function, and again, its job is to listen for this action. So whenever it hears the announcement, user selected, it's gonna say, oh, um, all right, what user was selected, and that's the active user. That's all it does. And by the way, one other thing that I wanna mention, whenever any action occurs, no matter if it's in this file, another file, anytime any action occurs, that action automatically gets sent to all reducers. All right, that's an important concept to kind of remember. So if you're saying, wait a minute, so you're saying my action is gonna be sent to this reducer even though it doesn't really need it anyway? Well, yes. Does it matter? No, because this reducer is gonna return the same piece of data no matter what. And the majority of your time, most of your reducers are just gonna ignore these announcements, these actions. However, what you can do in some reducers is you can set it up to respond to these actions appropriately. So how do you do that? Well, let's finally kind of get to it. So I might as well put this at the top. So export default function, and we'll just say state equals null. All right, so let me show you guys something else real quick. 
Let me delete some of this crap, clean it up. Do I need my diagram still? I'll keep my action. All right. So you know that I said a million times that all a reducer is, is just a little chunk of memory that your application needs, whether it's a list of users, the currently selected user, whatever. So whenever we create all these little bits of memory, we need to kind of put them together into this thing, all reducers. Yeah, we already learned that before. Why am I saying it again? I'm saying this because even when your application first boots up, this little chunk of memory, it needs to be equal to something wait a minute, you don't have any user currently selected yet. Well, we still can't just return undefined or else we're gonna get a bunch of errors. So what people usually do is they give this a default value. And the default value just has to be anything. It can be equal to you know a blank object, it can be equal to zero, it can be equal to anything just not undefined or else you're gonna generate a bunch of errors. So with the new ES6 syntax, you can actually just set a default parameter right here. Or if you want, then you can just return um, uh, you know, a blank object, or you can give it like a default user, like saying when your app first boots up, just give it Bucky by default, whatever. But that's an error that a lot of people come across and they don't know why, so I just saved you guys the trouble. So there you go. So again, what this is gonna do is it's gonna take an action as well. So right now we only have one action, right? Where's my action? So right now we only have one action that can occur, user selected. But eventually in a full fledged app, we're gonna have a bunch of actions, menu open, button clicked, user deleted, message sent, a bunch of these little announcements going off. So what we do in our reducer is we need to say, okay, what announcements do we care about? So you pretty much say, um, if it's user selected, then do this. If it's message sent, do that. And you have like a bunch of different if statements. If this, if this, if this. However, whenever you have a bunch of different if statements, it's better just to use a switch. It's like a more compact way of writing a whole bunch of if statements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen, listen for the action type. So again, that's just the announcement that got made. And I can actually copy this so we'll say, in the case that the announcement or action was user selected, what do we want to do? Well, all we want to do is we want to return, and remember, we have to return some piece of data. That's what a, that's what, excuse me, a reducer is, is just a little piece of data that you want to return. So this is the active user reducer. So what are we going to return? Well, we're just going to return the payload because the payload is the user that they clicked on. And this is the easiest thing ever. So all we're gonna do is return the action dot, why say playlist? How did my fingers do that automatically? It's weird. Sometimes I just start typing and I think I'm gonna type like Bucky and I type like ham sandwich. I'm like, how did I do that? All right, let's get back on track here, Bucky. And break. And I won't give it a default and I'll say return state. All right, so if there was no announcement, well, I'll say this. When your app first boots up, then we're just gonna say state equals null. So we can say blank object, but I'll show you guys a cool little trick that you can do later on whenever you hit null. So we'll say state equals null. When your app first boots up, it just returns state. Now, later on, whenever they click one of these users, then it's gonna hear this announcement. It's gonna hear this action and it says, all right, what do I want to return? I need to return some piece of data whenever they selected a user. Well, all I'm going to do is return the payload, which is the user right there. Easy enough. So this reducer is always going to return the same list of users. We're not touching that. Everything's perfect there. And this one is always going to return the user that was last selected. This is beautiful. So now, again, all we have to do is add it to the all reducer. So import, what am I gonna name this? I'll just say uh, active user reducer from reducer active user and all right. So whenever I use this in my app, I'll just refer to it as active user and it is equal to the active user reducer, which is essentially this function right there. 
beautiful.